Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, you've been reading about, uh, been learning about, uh, you know, uh, random variables, PMF, uh, multiple random variables, join PMF, and then functions of uh, random variables also. Uh, so this lecture and this series of lectures, maybe two or three of them, uh, will walk you through uh, maybe how to picture these functions a little bit better, maybe work with them a little bit better, some more of an introduction to how to compute distributions of functions of a random variable. Okay, so this is a very crucial thing. So as you as you go along into statistics and all that, you will see quite often you will model one random variable, and then what is of actual interest to you is some function of that random variable. And uh, you know you, you have you know model something with one random variable, you have a distribution for it. You don't want to keep modeling more and more and more. You just want to use that and then find out the distribution of the functions automatically. So this is something. Uh, that will show up again and again and uh, having comfort with how what happens when you do functions of random variables is uh, very useful in modeling you you can you can sort of identify some relationships and various other things involved okay so what we'll start of course is with very basics uh, but once you understand these basics it will be useful for you uh, later on okay so let's get started So I'm going to begin with uh, one random variable and one to one functions. So these are the easiest uh, possible case and you will see whenever there's only one random variable and a function involved, a very simple method called the table method will just generally work and uh, it's, it's just easy to do computations but nevertheless I'll just point out some things uh, that change when you have uh, you know, one random variable, one to one functions versus many to one functions. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. So here's an uh, example. The first thing is to visualize the random variable. So always I think uh, if, if you don't like equations, you want a picture to visualize, I think you should think of a plot of PMF versus the value that the random variable takes uh, in this uh, fashion. So supposing you have uniform, uh, you know, 0 to 10, then, uh, you know, the PMF is 1 by 11, isn't it? So that's the, that's the PMF. Uh, this thing will give me a pointer. Okay, so the PMF is uh, one by eleven uh, for each of these possibilities. So, so you can make you can think of like this. These these plots are called stem plots. You can make these stem plots in uh, in various uh, computational packages. So you will have you know at zero the height is one by eleven. At one the height is one by eleven, and so on. So I can maybe even write it for you. So this height is uh, you know this, this common height is one by eleven. Okay, so that's the height, that's the value taken by the PMF at 0, 1, 2, 3, so on till 10. So this kind of a stem plot visualization for the PMF uh, gives you a very clear idea of uh, what is going on with the random variable itself. Okay, so this picture tells you the random variable is taking values from 0 to 10, um, you know, 0, 1, 2, etc. Uh, with probability 1 by 11. Okay, the next picture down below is the binomial distribution with uh, parameters 10 and 0.5. And you see here the probability here is different, right? So probability for a binomial distribution, uh, you know, probability of, uh, you know, x equals k is going to be, you know, 10 choose k, uh, 0 0.5 power, uh, well, in this case, just 0 0.5 power 10, but anyway, I'll, I'll write it uh, carefully, 0 0.5 power 10 minus k, okay? So this is the distribution that's plotted here. So you can, so, so immediately you sort of see this picture, right? The value 5 is the most frequent, then 4 and 6 occur. And as you go towards the either end, 0 or 10, it's much, much less likely. So, uh, so these kind of pictures are called stem plots. And stem plots are a very, very interesting and simple way to visualize PMF. So some, suppose somebody gives you a PMF, you want to do a stem plot and just see how it looks. So immediately you get an idea of uh, how, how the distribution sort of behaves in some way. Okay, so this is just one random variable, one distribution. I'm just showing you the PMF and we'll see what happens uh, when we do functions of these random variables, uh, what's going to happen to the PMF uh, for different functions. Okay, so let's begin with a very, very simple function. Okay, the function I'm going to look at, uh, x is my random variable. I've considered two different examples here. One is the uniform distribution 0 to 10, binomial 10 comma 0.5, just to show you, you know, what happens under different distributions. And the function I'm considering is y equals x minus 5, okay? And this is the rudimentary table method that I spoke about. What is the table method? You simply write the entire PMF of x as a table and add the function y 
corresponding to each value of x, value of x. Okay, so y equals x minus 5, isn't it? So if x is 0, y is minus 5. x is 1, y is minus 4. All that I've done is written it down in a table in this fashion. The same thing I've done for the binomial distribution. And you can imagine for any other distribution, you can make a table like this. Okay, maybe if the random variable takes a lot of values, the table will become very big and a bit ugly. But nevertheless, you can write down a simple uh, table like this for any function of one random variable, right? So this is what I would generally refer to as the table method. And it's a very powerful method to compute distributions uh, when uh, the random variable uh, goes through a function. As in function of a random variable, you can compute distributions like this. So first step is this table, okay? Once you make this table, it's uh, relatively straightforward to see what's going on here, right? So, so notice here, uh, x takes values from 0 to 10, probabilities is 1 by 11, etc. And here you have the list of values taken by y and you notice here that this became a 1 to 1 function. You know, this is a 1 to 1 function. So, each value, you know, each different values of x go to different values of y. There will be no repetition in this value, right? So, there is no repetition. in these values. Once there is no repetition, the distribution of y is very, very easy, right? So y takes values in this range, minus 5 to 5, right? So in both cases, y takes values, minus 5, minus 4, dot, 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 all the way to 5. And the probabilities are given here. Probability that y equals minus 5 is 1 by 11. Probability that y equal to 1 is 1 by 11. All of them are the same. Likewise, in this case, the binomial case, it's, it's varied, you know, different probabilities. But nevertheless, each probability is easy to identify. Probability of y equals minus 5 is just this 0 0.0009. Probability that y equals 1 is 0.20507, etc. So, so once you have a table written down like this, whatever the distribution may be, finding the distribution of y under a 1 to 1 function is almost trivial. For small cases, you just write it down. You just have to change the probabilities suitably. You know, when previously this you know, 0 0.009 was for x equals 0. Now it becomes for y equals minus 5 because I did y equals x minus 5. Okay, so as simple as that, uh, simple enough uh, transformation. Okay, you can also represent this graphically on the stem plot. Let me show you. It's easy enough to see. So here is the uniform stem plot, right? We had the uniform stem plot. Each uh, height here is 1 by 11. Okay, so after you do the y equals x minus 5, you get the same 1 by 11, except notice what has happened here, 0 went off to minus 5. So, this is minus 5, right? So, this guy went here, this guy went here, so on, right? So, 1 went off to minus 4. Notice what has happened here, 1 went off to minus 4 and so on. So, you know, 10 went on to 5, etc. So, so, what is going on here when you do y equals x minus 5, it's a very simple translation sort of thing. The PMF sort of remains the same and the axis keeps shifting when you do x minus 5. Okay, so this is a good way to visualize what the function is doing to the distribution. The distribution itself is sort of remaining the same. When you do y equals x minus 5, all you're doing is sort of translating. Okay, so these kind of x minus 5 type transformations are very, very easy. Uh, these are called translations. You're just moving x from one set of type of values to another, you're not doing anything uh, different to them. Generally, any linear transformation, like for instance, if you do ax plus b for any a and b, will sort of do something like this for a distribution, okay? It will keep the distribution the same. It will just move it from one part to the other, okay? Hopefully, you can see this. This, this maybe helps you visualize uh, the table a little bit better, okay? You can do the same for the binomial distribution. I've just shown you exactly what it is. The, the x-axis just changes, right? Instead of going from 0 to 10, it goes from minus 5 to 5. Everything else remains the same, okay? So, you can see how easy this is to do for any distribution, okay? So, here is another uh, function. It, it's y equals 2 power x. Immediately, you're scared, oh, this is, looks like powers and all that. But, you know, there's nothing in this. This is still a 1 to 1 function, okay? So, notice that's what's very, very important. The first thing you want to identify from the function is whether it's 1 to 1 or not. Another way of identifying that, you write down this table, there is no repetition here, isn't it? So immediately you see the transformation is very trivial. 1 to 1 transformation 
only changes the labeling of the x right instead of x equals 0 y becomes 1 in that case uh, you know probability remains the same it is exactly 1 by 11. Uh, it's like for instance if you, if, you want, if you want to look at the binomial distribution probability that x equal to 6 was like 0 0.2050 what is going to happen here y just became 64 but the probability is retained there is no there is no change that you need in the probability it is simple function of uh, one variable if, you, if y is 2 power x instead of saying x is 6 you are saying y is 2 power 6 which is 64 right. So it is uh, as long as you have a 1 to 1 function a simple function uh, there is no real uh, change in or no computation is needed uh, for the probabilities okay. So let me show you a visualization you will see the visualization will be suddenly different because the function is very different it is not a translation anymore it is not x minus 5 it is 2 power x okay it is some other function. So notice what has happened here okay the first x is from 0 to 10 it is all flat and nice and together and 1 by 11 and all that is fine. So here also you have a 1 by 11. But notice what has happened because I did a 2 power x it sort of amplifies everything right. So you have here uh, you know this is this this corresponds to 10 okay this is 1024 uh, this corresponds to 9 this guy corresponds to 8 right 2 power 8 is uh, 256 uh, and then you have 7 occurring here 6 is 2 power 6 is 64 likewise right. So 0 goes all the way to the left it is 1 okay. So notice what this uh, function has done when you do 2 power x it seems to have you know spread out your PMF over a large value but height remains the same nothing much has changed okay. So it is the same sort of distribution except that instead of saying 0, 1, 2 through 10 I am simply made it 2 power x so it goes from 1 to 1, 0, 2, 4 okay. Same thing with binomial just because it was binomial uh, you know the, the distribution sort of uh, is different it is not uniform anymore but you know the distribution and the mapping simply pushes you to uh, you know different values instead of 10 I am going to say 1024 right. So this is just 1024 likewise instead of 9 I am going to say 512 same way I mean nothing much changes beyond that 6 goes to 64 and uh, so on okay. No, no I think this is 7 6 goes to 64 and so on okay. So the same same probabilities except that they have moved out and spread out because the function is like that you know 2 power x sort of amplifies these differences so 6 goes to 64 uh, you know 9 goes to 512 8 goes to 256 so it sort of spreads out but you can see the shape sort of remains the same you know, instead of having a very symmetric shape they sort of spread out a little bit but the same probabilities are retained okay. So in fact it turns out any one to one function right so if you take one random variable and send it through a one to one function essentially the same thing happens okay. The reason is uh, you know uh, if, if you say y equals f of x that corresponds to x equals x okay. So that is the most important part. So if you have a one to one function y equals uh, f of x is the same event as x equals x okay. So in terms of events if y takes a value f of x, x takes the value x okay. So it's it's one to one. Uh, once you have a one to one function, it's it's it's, it's the most important uh, criteria here. Uh, it's rex, the same uh, probability values are there, except that you have relabeled the x-axis instead of saying uh, you know x, you're going to say f of x, and f is just a one to one function. It's easy enough to do. Okay. Uh, the table method is something that's quite straightforward. Uh, there is easy ways to visualize the PMF. Okay. So I hope this clears up some confusion you may have had as to what happens to one to one functions in fact this monotonic uh, thing is very important one quick way to identify one to one functions is if you plot f of x versus x uh, if it is monotonic right so it, it should sort of be increasing like this right. So if you if you do a horizontal line at any point there should be only one intersection okay so that is sort of this is something you might have seen in math 1. So this tells you how to identify one to one functions uh, monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing functions are one to one. Uh, these are all uh, easy ways of identification okay. So hopefully if you have a monotonic function now in one variable you are not scared it is a very simple uh, transformation it does not do anything to the probabilities except that it reorders or changes the values that uh, the random variable takes okay. Thank you.